You know, if you think about the journey of mapping, um, the first dimension was really the old maps where we had them on the cards printed, and they were cumbersome, but it helped us many, many years ago to navigate from A to B. Now we're moving into three dimension, which is currently where here is putting a lot of its technology. How can you start to create a map that lives, that is always fresh, that is not just looking at the physical roads, but starts to build virtual roads, the layers between buildings, because we're not just solving for a use case of cars, autonomously driving or not, but also drones and advanced robotics in the future. So that's where the company is today, and I shared on another piece, you know, the first peek into the fourth dimension is that you can start to look through buildings. You can start to correlate different vehicles and do predictive analytics as vehicles are starting to move from A to B. We will have our own cars, we will have probe data from phones, we have data from other sources and we have sensor data. All fused and mashed into one open location platform. So the number of cars that we have today on the road is in the range of four to 500 cars on top of my head. We are driving per week 50,000 kilometers or 30,000 miles up to 130 feet or 40 meters high. So we're capturing the world already as we speak over many, many years in a three-dimensional format. So if you think about the challenges to build the open location platform, it's a very new field. So there's not many people that have this knowledge. There is a fight for data scientists, for people that understand deep learning, people that understand neural nets, where systems become smart and program themselves. You need to have a certain installed base. It's always the combination between being innovative, but then having the opportunity to really scale it very quickly. So those are just a couple of areas that, uh, that make this uh, a fantastic but very challenging journey.